welcome back everyone so let us start lecture 12 so so far we have discussed uh, symmetry present in the molecules and we have learned how to identify or how to classify the molecules based on the symmetry elements and symmetry operations present into various symmetry point groups so by now we should be well versed with all the symmetry point groups how to classify a molecule into different symmetry point groups like uh, for example look at any object around yourself and or look at any take any molecule and try to classify into one of the symmetry point groups right so that should be very very clear so uh, once we have achieved that status so we are ready to actually uh, go for very first application which is uh, let's say immediate application of symmetry point groups so the first property that we can predict or that we can identify or determine whether molecule has that physical property or not is dipole moment so we are all aware what is uh, dipole moment so dipole moment or polarity right whether a molecule is polar or non-polar polarity so whether a molecule is non-polar or uh, polar it depends on whether a molecule has dipole moment or not so what is dipole moment it's the separation of charges along any particular bond and let's say if uh, all such separation of charges or all such bond movements add up together or not cancel uh, against each other then the molecule is said to have that it is a dipole moment so for example if we consider let's say uh, some molecule okay just an example so in this case the dipole moment along this and this bond and along this bond is not going to cancel with each other whereas if we look at a molecule like this PTCl4 the dipole moment along this side versus along this side will cancel against each other similarly here it will cancel with this so this one uh, will not have any net dipole moment or any molecule in such a geometry may not have uh, dipole moment but this molecule will have a dipole moment so this molecule will be called as polar molecule and this will be called as non-polar molecule right so uh, let's see with the rules of symmetry and point groups can we identify whether a molecule has dipole moment or not okay so uh, just to define a molecule okay so so the point group not only determines it does not only determines the or predicts we can say whether a molecule has dipole moment or not but in certain cases it will also tell you the direction of the dipole moment so that's pretty interesting right i mean based on symmetry uh, and based on the point groups you are able to predict whether a molecule has dipole moment or not and then uh, you can also tell the direction of the dipole moment So let's look at certain rules. Uh, so we can say if a molecule has center of inversion, all the bond moments 
will get cancelled out right so any point group that has i will not have dipole moment so what are the point groups uh, we are left with in such cases d infinity h and d n h and what else c i group of molecules this is these are examples certain examples group of molecules will not have dipole moments so why dipole moment is important because it tells you about the solubility of uh, the molecule and then other certain other properties which depends on this dipole moment so it is important to know when you're doing chemistry it is important to know whether a molecule is polar or non-polar right okay so molecules with the same logic molecules with more than one cn axis with n greater than 1 will not have dipole moment so that because if there are multiple more than one cn axis it will cancel out the dipole moment of individual bonds so this leaves uh, the point groups let's say so all d point groups dihedral point groups because they have cn and n c2s perpendicular so dihedral and cubic point groups so this includes d dnh dnd d infinity h and cubic means t th td o oh i i h all these have more than one cn axis so they will not have uh, dipole moments right so that leaves uh, a very few set so let's go ahead and see what else we are left with so molecules with sn axis that is improper rotation or rotation axis or we can also say cn and sigma h because if you have cn and sigma h then you will also have sn right vice versa is not true so we can say that molecules with sn axis or let us make this as a separate point actually so that it is not confusing so molecules with sn axis do not have dipole moments and now molecule with cn and sigma h do not have dipole moment okay so that leaves with what all point groups that will have dipole moment one is c1 which does not have anything basically other than e then cs which will just have a plane of symmetry cn and cnv these are the four point groups which have dipole moment so life is very easy right now if you want to know whether a dipole moment is there a molecule has dipole moment or not all you have to do is just identify the point group if the molecule belongs to any of these four point groups it will have a dipole moment otherwise it will not okay also in these two cases the dipole moment direction can be identified will point along the principal axis okay 
So because CN and CNB uh, have only one CN axis, so only one principal axis is there, so only one rotation axis is there. So that will be the axis where the dipole moment will lie. So we can take one example of this CNB, which is, let's say, water molecule. The dipole moment will lie along this side which is very obvious because if you take the vector sum of this dipole moment and this dipole moment it will lie along this side right so it's a simple vector sum of dipole moments now similarly if you take a square pyramidal molecule let's say something like this which is a b b b right so in this case, the dipole moment will lie along this AB bond, this AB bond, because all the individual dipole moments will add up and will lie along the C4 axis, which is present, right? So this is a C4 V point group, and this is C2 V point group. Both of them belong to the CNB, and dipole moment will lie along the principal axis, which is C4 in this case and C2 in this case, right? So this dipole moment concept should be very very simple and straightforward wherever it is cancelled of course it will not have but then it will be now directed by uh, these set of point groups right okay so now let us look at the second important property which is called as optical activity so again optical activity is also important because for example racemic mixtures of certain molecules are not active whereas only one particular optically active uh, or one particular enantiomer is active in certain activities for example many drug molecules racemic mixture is toxic but a particular enantiomer is actually active so identifying optical activity is very very important when you are doing any kind of synthesis or any kind of chemistry and having to know optical activity based on symmetry is really helpful right so what is optical activity is optical activity is the or we can say that optically active molecules are non superimposable mirror images right so if you take a molecule and if you take a mirror image of that and if you try to superimpose it if the molecules are non superimposable you call it as optically active what do you mean by optically active uh, and these are also called as enantiomers enantiomers right so the meaning of optical activity is that they rotate the plane of polarized light passing through them. So you must have all done a polarimeter experiment in your first year, right? I mean, where you have taken sucrose solution and find out what is the optical rotation of that particular sucrose solution and do it as a function of concentration. So there you must have seen that uh, the plane of the polarized light is rotating, right? So that is because the sucrose is optically active, right? So I'm not going to go into details of uh, how it is done. So this is uh, too basic for this course. So you must know what is the meaning of plane polarized light and how it is rotated and all. So let's not go into that. But uh, our aim is to now identify on the basis of symmetry how a particular molecule can be identified whether it's optically active or not. So to understand this, we should uh, know the basic meaning of what is when a molecule is called as symmetric when it is called as dissymmetric and when it is called as asymmetric so we first test the
the presence or absence of improper access and then we test the presence or absence of proper access okay so symmetric molecules will have improper axis present and proper axis may or may not present and optical activity they are inactive so symmetric molecules which have sn axis so we can say this is sn and this is cn right now dissymmetric molecules sn axis is absent and cn axis is present and they are active asymmetric molecules sn is absent cn is also absent and they are also active or other way to identify this is let us say if you have a molecule and you are asking whether a sn axis is present or not you will get two answers so i'm trying to write a flow chart yes or no so if sn is present then you assign it as a chiral a chiral is optically inactive okay and if a sn is not present then you call it as chiral dissymmetric now what are the point groups to which this category belongs this will be c1 cn you can verify this and dm now if there is no cn that will take these two out and this will be called as chiral asymmetric and this will be c1 point group okay so we can say that uh, asymmetric molecules are actually subset of dissymmetric molecules right so the vice versa is not true so asymmetric is a subset of dissymmetric molecules so all asymmetric molecules are dissymmetric but all dissymmetric molecules are not asymmetric right but they are all chiral so that sums up the optical activity and the dipole moment so you know now if a molecule is having uh, one of these point groups then it will be optically active and then if a molecule is having one of these four point groups then the molecule will have dipole moment so based on point group classification you can identify at least two physical properties of the molecule which is a big deal in itself right okay so that finishes our discussion on symmetry and point groups and now we will see how symmetry properties are utilized using the concepts of group theory into more details into more applications okay so let us finish this lecture here today and then we will look into group theory details uh, from now on so from now on it will be assumed that given a molecule you know how to identify the point group so that that portion will not be discussed if a molecule is now taken to discuss any details of group theory so we will not be discussing what is the point group how that particular molecule is classified into that particular point group so we'll be only discussing straight away classifying that molecule as this point group and then from there the discussion will start so i'm trying to separate these two topics so that you know that this is the symmetry topic and now we will move to group theory which will be more application oriented and then we'll develop the theory part of uh, the group theory part how symmetry properties of molecules will be utilized in group theory okay so let's uh, finish this discussion today and thank you